Spellkit is my favorite framework, but that doesn't mean it's without its problems. And today I wanted to talk about those problems. I've been building way more complex stuff with Svelte lately, been testing out more advanced stuff with streaming, with effects, with building library implementations for stuff like React Query in Svelte. I've been doing a lot. I've really started to run up against the edges of this framework and I've gotten a much better idea of how it really feels. So I wanted to talk about it. There are three things I want to cover here, and that's going to be the new runes primitives, the extensibility and ecosystem around Svelte and SvelteKit, and the one component per page thing. And I want to go over what the issues here are, some of my solutions, and just general thoughts and vibe on the framework and how it just feels to build with these days. So let's start with the runes primitives. If you're watching this video, you're almost certainly already familiar with the new runes primitives added with Svelte 5. The main ones are the state rune, the effect rune, and the derived rune. These are the new primitives for reactivity in Svelte, and overall, I think they're really good. When I was first reacting to this a couple months ago, when we just got the announcement and got Svelte 5 in our hands, I said that I really liked the API on all of these and how they felt, and that still is mostly true with one exception, and that would be the lack of dependency array in the effects and the derives. Now, I understand why these don't have it. On the surface, at first, it felt really ergonomic and nice to not have to do that. If we have a super trivial example here, where if we just wanted to do um, dollar effect um, console.log count, so this will console.log out the count anytime it changes, this is super nice. We don't have to stick the dependency array on there like we do in React. We don't have to worry about making sure we have all the proper dependencies in there so that we don't accidentally infinitely run our effect and do a bunch of weird stuff. It felt like it would save us from a lot of foot guns until I started doing more complex library work. This example is kind of hard to explain because of how convoluted and weird it is, but if you've ever worked with React Query before, you've probably seen the syntax where you can pass in a state variable into the key, and then whenever you change that state variable in the key, the key of that query will update and it will refire the query and you can get this really nice reactive pattern on your data fetching so that if, for example, you had like a um, filter set within your form, you change that filter, it updates the state variable that refetches the query, you get your data back down, instantly repopulate it because everything's a state variable. It's a really, really nice way to do client side data fetching and I wanted to implement something like that in Svelte. But the way the new rune primitives work, they are signals. And if you're not familiar with signals, the easiest way to explain them is they're kind of like observables. I'm not going to go deep here on how signals work. If you want to learn more about that, Joy of Code put out this amazing video that does a really good job of showing how these things actually work. But because these are signals, this means that the reactivity is a little weird and the way we pass these into functions is also a little weird. We need to use getters and setters in order to actually make those variables work reactively by passing them into like, for example, this counter lad class I was making. Again, this was when I was deep working on the React Query for Svelte thing. I already made a video about why this was probably a mistake and I'm not gonna go through with this. I learned a ton from it, but wouldn't really recommend. But basically in here, what I was testing is having an effect go off whenever we change one of these variables within the class. Because one of the cool things we can do with these new runes is we can stick them into these classes. These .svelte.ts files and creating these classes are so fucking good. I love them. These are, oh, I absolutely adore these things. I've been abusing the hell out of them and they make writing code so much better. The mental model for Svelte has really clicked with me lately and I'll talk about this later in the single file component part, but these just make the framework so much better and I cannot imagine living without these. I've gone back to React and not having them just feels bad. But one place where it did feel a little weird was I wanted to have it so that whenever we change the key variable, whenever we change this count, I want to run this effect to change the cache object we're using to fetch the data. It's a whole thing. I don't want to go deep into the implementation because then this will just be a 40 minute video of me ranting about the schizophrenic hell I went through to make this actually work. Um, but effectively what you can see up here is what we're doing is we're running through all of the keys here in this effect and we're just calling the key function. Because if we just pass this in as count, then it's just going to pass in a value and it's not going to be reactive because 
these are signals they have a getter and a setter on them and if we just pass in the normal thing we'll just get the value when we pass it in and it will just be passed by value we want to pass in a reference so to pass in a reference we pass in a function which just returns the count so we go through we run through all the entries in our key then we check whether or not it's a function if it's a function we call it and that will then track it within the effect because of the way signals work and then hypothetically we can rerun this effect that gets very confusing and weird because if there's any other reactive stuff within the object, it can then also be called in there. These things get very complex and difficult to work with when you start doing these weird things where in React, by having an explicit dependency array, I can very clearly state which pieces I want to listen to and I don't end up with weird random things causing reactive changes that I don't expect. This ended up happening to me when I implemented this, uh, where in this little example, it does work because when I increment this count, it does switch our random number by switching the cache entry and I believe if I increment this up to four these two will now be synced so now I go here and then these two are now in sync so that did work in the basic one but in the more complicated version of this it didn't work because we had other pieces within our query definition that were also reactive so that would also trigger the effect which would cause all sorts of bizarre things to happen that are just really really hard to wrap your head around these primitives are great in the happy path when you're just doing let count equal state you're doing let is selected equal state false or whatever these things work super well the basic derives basic defects in the happy path they are incredible as soon as you get into these weird complicated use cases they get a lot more painful and it's i don't know the react primitives are can be annoying to work with on the happy path because they're so verbose and have so much to them but the reason for that is because they're really good primitives that can work for literally everything they're they are very good primitives and I do understand them. That's something that's happened with all of this is as I've gotten deeper in Svelte, you might expect that I would come to really hate and dislike React and think it's a bad framework. Actually, the opposite has happened. I've come to appreciate it more and I've learned more and more the pieces of React that I really like and I think are really good. And I've also learned the pieces of React that I don't like as much. I don't like having to deal with the React Reconciler. I don't like having to re-render an entire component whenever I change a state variable. I really like the way Svelte works where I can kind of just write JavaScript code and it works. I like being able to directly manipulate the DOM and React doesn't flip its shit whenever I do that. There are pros and cons to each of these and I think these primitives are very good, but if you end up doing more complicated things, these can get a bit more difficult to reason about. And I definitely think that there could be some better tooling here where I think I would love to have like a Svelte scan thing where I could see in my DOM or whatever, whenever a state change happens, whenever something re-renders. The inspect rune is actually very good for this. You can inspect your variables and check whenever they change and re-render. That is great. But I would love to have a system for being able to see like, oh, whenever this count changes, whenever this random number changes, I'd love to be able to just see that. Overall, I think these primitives are good. They feel good to work with. I love using them in these classes, but when you get to these complicated edge cases, they get a little more painful. The next thing I want to talk about is the overall ecosystem and library support for Svelte. One of the things you'll always hear with React is how good the ecosystem is, how many awesome packages we have. We have React Query, we have TRPC, we have Shad CN, we have Next.js for all its faults, but I do overall think it's a pretty good framework that does a decent job at what it's trying to do. It has very good primitives. We have all of these different things that just make life easier, even down to like markdown rendering or syntax highlighting. All of these things have a React version, which will give you a first class hook to just go ahead and use it. Svelte sometimes has those, but they're usually not nearly as good, usually not nearly as well maintained, and often you end up kind of having to roll your own. A great example of this is the React Query and TRPC stuff. Part of the reason I went and tried to build that is because while these do have Svelte implementations, they're very clearly not the main implementation that those teams are working on, which is totally fine and understandable. It's a smaller, more niche framework. I get why they wouldn't dedicate as many resources to it, but those implementations are not nearly as good or strong. And I've especially run into this when trying to do weird things like markdown rendering. Something I've been working on recently is trying to get better with HTTP streams, seeing how these things work and working with like LLMs and stuff like that. So I ended up building a very minimal chat app in Svelkit. If I just say, hi, how are you? This will go ahead and send the message and then get a response back. But I guess we'll do something a bit longer. Um, let's just say, what are some fun things to do in SF? 
and then it'll give me this nice response and you'll notice this is being properly formatted we're getting our list here we're getting our uh, headings here we're getting our spacing all of that because we are rendering out the markdown that the llm responds with initially i was trying to use the md svex package or whatever the markdown for svelte package which does work pretty well when you have static markdown, but it is clearly not intended to be used for this kind of thing. It didn't feel really good. And a lot of even just some of the methods when I was using it just kind of broke and didn't really work. So I had a lot of trouble actually using that package. And initially I was kind of annoyed because I'm like, well, the third party support isn't great here in React. You can just call any of the markdown parser libraries in a hook and then it will just work. In Svelte, we don't necessarily have that. But the solution here is what I've heard a lot of people talk about in the past where you don't necessarily even need to have these things. Like I mentioned earlier, one of the really nice parts of Svelte is the fact that it is basically just JavaScript and it works just like basic JavaScript. And you can get away with doing a lot of things in Svelte very easily that you can't get away with doing in React because in React world, you need to wrap things in a way that React can work with them correctly. If you have variables that you need to not change between renders, you need to put those in a ref. If you have functions that you need to not change between renders, those need to go in a callback, et cetera, et cetera. Versus in Svelte, you can kind of just use baseline packages like the marked package, which if you look at the documentation for this, this is kind of just designed to be used within a CLI or for static HTML or whatever. But it works great in Svelte because what I can do is I can just import marked and then in this derived by any time we change the content, which is coming in from props, I just go through, I uh, switch out the new lines so that they render properly. And then I just call marked real new lines content, which is just using this package. And then suddenly we can just do at HTML markdown content. And it works. The same thing applies for stuff like D3. I believe they have like special React packages and stuff like that, and they don't have anything special for Svelte, but we don't actually need anything special for Svelte. Because of the way Svelte works, the fact that we don't have to deal with something like a reconciler or whatever, it is just kind of JavaScript in a way. It's, it's JavaScript with some magic attached to it. These The runes are admittedly fairly magic, and trying to get deeper into how those actually work has been a bit of a pain. But if you get outside of that, it is just kind of JavaScript and we do just kind of have a script on an HTML page here and I can just go ahead and say derive by, call my marked and then render my HTML in here. It's the same thing with D3. We can just do normal D3 DOM manipulation and Svelte doesn't get upset. It works just fine. So when I went to implement this, it ended up actually being very easy because I could just kind of use the base level package and didn't need any special Svelte specific stuff. This does end up requiring you to have a better understanding of the way Svelte actually works, the way the library or package you're trying to use actually works. But if you do understand both of those pieces, bringing them together is not actually that hard and it results in you being able to make really good stuff pretty easily. I initially was really annoyed that I didn't have access to all of these different libraries like I did in React, but over time, as I've gotten used to it and really learned how this works, it's not as big of an issue as I initially thought it would be, and yeah, it hasn't really limited me. The last thing I want to talk about here is going to be the one file per component problem. When I first made my Svelte 5 reactions, this was one of the biggest problems I had with the framework at the time, was I didn't like that I couldn't have multiple components in one file. This is easily one of my favorite parts of React. React is incredibly composable and it's really easy to define a page in one file, but have seven different components in there that encapsulate all of their logic in one nice little piece. And then you can just compose those together really well. And it does feel really, really good. In Svelte, you can get that same level of composability, but you have to do it between files, which ends up feeling not nearly as good as having it all in one place. Recently though, as I've gotten deeper into Svelte 5 and more used to working with the classes and stores and runes, I've started to not mind this nearly as much. In the example I just showed, this little chat example thing, I've ended up moving all of the major state functionality into this chat state class. And this basically allows me to break most of the reactive logic out into a separate piece in a way that ended up feeling almost better, I think, than the multiple component model. What I ended up doing in here is I started with my interface. Um, every chat state has an ID. It has messages, which is a state variable of all the different messages. And it has a send message function here. 
And I ended up, I won't go too deep into the implementation because again, this has been me grinding out effect and trying to get more used to working with this. We'll talk about effect more in the future. But really what I've ended up finding is that the trade-off of not being able to put multiple components in one file is worth it for being able to create these state classes. I have started abusing the hell out of these and they just feel so good to work with. I have the state for my messages and then I have the functions which manipulate the state of these messages. And then within my component here, I just grab my chat state and then this chat state will have everything on it that was in that interface, has this send message so that whenever I submit my form, we uh, send the new message in here that will then update the state within the chat state because this is a state variable. And then within the actual markup here, I can just work with chat state dot messages as a normal state variable. This is such a nice way to think about reactivity and client side logic that I I don't know, I can't really imagine not building stuff without this. And every time I go to work in React these days, I end up really, really missing this. Being able to just write these nice JS classes, do all my work in here, and then just have a couple state variables that I expose up at the top and then use those without in my markdown. It's really great. It's basically resulted in me often having a page.svelte and then right next to it, some class that maintains all the state for that page. And then the page is responsible for the actual markdown and then basic event listeners like a handle submit or an on click or whatever. And then the chat state is responsible for all of the different pieces of logic and it just kind of feels good to be honest. Well, yes, in a perfect world, it would be nice to have multiple files in one component. I think with how ergonomic the actual Svelte components feel, I'm okay with not having them because in order to make them actually work, you would probably have to turn, make it look a bit more like React where you would have to probably define a component as a function. It would have to return JSX or some weird HTML thing. It would have to put all this logic into the top of the function. It would end up being kind of awkward and weird. And one of the nice things about Svelte, and this sounds like a very silly little thing, but I actually like how Svelte is not tabbed in more than once by default because something you'll notice in react is that just at the base level whenever you have a component it's a function so all of our logic has to be already tabbed in once because it's in a function versus here we just have our markup right here down at the bottom of the page and then up here within our script it's it is tabbed in once because it's within a script tag here, but you don't end up getting the nasty amount of tabs that you often get within React because these components already start like that and you have to add more and more stuff into them versus here is just kind of a page that has everything on it and it, it feels really good. I think that if I wasn't leaning so heavily on these new stores, I would probably be a little more annoyed by it, but the fact that I do have access to these, it just makes it kind of a non-issue and I really haven't found myself missing them that much. I think the big thing I wanted to get across in this video is that as I've gotten deeper into Svelte, I've also come to love and appreciate the framework even more. Once you get really good at it and you start to really get the mental model of it, you know how all these pieces fit together. It just feels so good to use. There's no real bullshit in it, no weird gotchas outside of maybe some weird stuff within dependencies of runes. It's a very good framework. I really enjoy it. And despite a couple minor issues, I can't really imagine myself using anything else at this point. So. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. I'll have a lot more to talk about with Svelts and Effect and all this different stuff coming very soon. And yeah, thanks for watching.